Hey guys, Oman G here, back again with a post-match reaction for Wolves versus Manchester United. Before I get into it, thanks again to everyone who, who joined us for the live stream. We will be doing that for away games. Let me know what you think about it, um, and the video will be in the end screen. Um, but yes, um, Wolves won, Manchester United won. Um, two points dropped, as the title says. Two points dropped, two points dropped. Um, because, you know, a big talking point of this will be why was there a conversation between Paul Polk and Marcus Rashford on penalty takers? Um, I've just watched a Sky uh, interview with two of them. It seems that two of them are pe the penalty takers and it's just a question of who's closest. So if Pogba wins a penalty, Pogba takes it. If Rashford wins, Rashford takes it. I personally think that's wrong. I think Marcus Rashford is our best, if not even England's best penalty taker. The goal he scored against PSG, the goal he scores for England, the goal he scored last week. You know, um, he has a better record. Yes, Pogba scored penalty for us, but I just feel that, um, you know, you can do that like when City last last week against West Ham, when, they're like, when they were 4-0 up, then you can have that conversation. But when it's like literally a question of, we need to get those three points, please. You give it to the best penalty taker. I'm not going to go in on Pogba in this, this post match review. I think much like last game, it was a game of two halves. This half, unlike the Chelsea game, we actually started quite strong. Um, and I think that, again, this is the issue of Manchester United. It's about us taking our chances, really. Um, and... We, sc we did. We took off first goal. Marshall scored. It was a brilliant finish. Good one-twos between Marshall and Marcus Rashford um, and Lingard. It, you know, simple touches, fine, great. Uh, and we've got 1-0. And, and, and we really, we pretty put Wolves under pressure. But then, second half, Wolves started pressing us. Adama Troyore, who actually, to be fair, Adama Troyore last season also did this because of his physicality, because of his intelligence just basically just bossed our midfield and our and to a certain extent our defense as well we got tired i don't think we were really able to make subs and that's a big thing i mean for me the biggest take from this game is that outside of united starting 10 or 11 we don't have any impact and it's scary you know liverpool have divo Carigi to come onto the bench tottenham have lucas mora um uh, City have pretty much everybody because their bench is ridiculous. Even Arsenal have players. If you look at the Arsenal bench that they can come on, you know, um, to make a difference, they don't have to play with Bamian and Lacazette. You know, um, Chelsea. You know, okay. Even then, they've got Tammy Abraham. They've got maybe Giroud can come on. So you could probably see, you know, if you're looking at the top four now, the squads that. The, there's no reason City, Liverpool, Tottenham, Arsenal should be finished top four. But if we're basing it purely on squad depth, because those teams have a greater squad depth currently than United or Chelsea. And Chelsea, I'd argue, even have a better squad depth than we do in, in, in the case of midfield. And we don't. Um, and it's concerning because United have always, in uh, seasons past, if we're down a goal or etc etc we've always been found a means of like let's bring someone else on let's do something um but for some reason now um we don't have that and one of the things that you see under Mourinho, you saw it's certainly something under Mourinho was that there was that comeback spirit that we had that we could do um i'm not seeing that so far uh, uh, since probably southampton i think in in earlier this year I'm not seeing that same. We went, we we got pegged back a goal, and literally we fell apart. And some of that could be because we're we're they're kids, and I think a big actually think I think I think a big reason is that you know Pogba, because people say Pogba, but Pogba is the oldest player, outfield player. De Gea is older, but De Gea can't really do much to be honest. So in terms of the oldest outfield player, the oldest outfield player is poor Pogba. You know so. Outside of that, everyone else is, you know, Daniel James, Rashford, Martial, McTominay, Pereira. Um, okay, um, Maguire, I think, is probably the same age as Pogba, I think, maybe. 
But I just think that, you know, we need, um, I don't know, we, we need, we need, ex we need, we needed to sign senior experienced players. We needed to sign senior experienced players um, and, and we didn't. Um, we didn't sign senior experienced players. We didn't um, strengthen our midfield. We sold players in the Kaku. This was a game, to be honest, where like, which would have been, I'll be controversial, which would have been good for Fellaini or Lukaku to, to come in. It would have. Stick Lukaku up, be a bully, although it was one touches, but bring him on as an impact sub, or bear, stick Fellaini on, 80-something minute, long ball up to Fellaini, you know, and and, and that, what world's your oyster? The other thing I'd say that I noticed um, is that, again, and this is a thing I mentioned this, I mentioned this at the start of the video, I mentioned this in my preview, is that, um, is that it is difficult for us to to break teams down. You know, is it we 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 take we take a lot of touches, take a lot of touches. We don't have that player really um, that can break teams down. We don't, um, and that's going to be difficult for us. So, because, so you know, there are not many teams that will come at United and will play, um, express themselves, give us space to play. So when we play against the Burnleys and the likes, and even the Southamptons, a lot of teams are going to come up. They see United and go right. If we stay organised, we don't give them space. They're not going to be a problem for us, and we need to really work on trying to find a way. Some of that comes from just taking good strikes out of goal. Some of that comes from using using set pieces. Some of that comes from using from scoring a penalties. But that's a big issue for me. Is that on corners, on free kicks, on set pieces, and certainly on penalties now. United haven't taken advantage. We're hoping, we're praying that we'll get a good goal from open play, which is good, and we and it's good, but we really need to take advantage of set pieces. We had at least a few set pieces that were awful. We didn't take a single good free kick or a single good corner that I'm aware of. Maybe there was one corner we took that was good in the, in, in, in the first half. One. And, you know, two opportunities. wan gives Lingard, needs to score them. So, again... For me, this on our side, the question is: We have to be clinical. We have to. 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 Have to, have to be very, very clinical. Um, and um, yeah, it's 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 a bitter one to take. It's a bitter one to take because you know um, a win here puts us top of the table. Um, now we're fourth. Arsenal fans will banter us, even though I'd argue they they lost against um, you know. Um, they then lost. I mean, they they only played Newcastle and Burnley, and we've got and we've got easier games. But you know, anything you can say about Arsenal is again the squad depth. You know, the squad depth is is there. Um, but we'll see. Um, you know, this weekend I think it's going to be. I think we've got Crystal Palace at home. We should be able to bounce back from that and get get a three points. We should be able to do that. Um, and you know, get a seven points. I think that. The Liverpool Arsenal game will be very interesting, um, but the most important thing is that we bounce back from this. But the same worries that I've had at the start of the season with our lack of depth, our lack of impact players, and our inability to reinforce are are are, um, are, are flaring up. And to be honest, I and I was never one of those United fans that was like, "Yes, so we're going to win the league. We're going to win the league. We're not going to win the league." Okay, we're not going to win the league. Get that out of your guys' head. We're not going to win the league. We're not going to win the league. Like I said, if Solskjaer gets top four of this team, that is a miracle. Our aim as United fans should be top four. Should definitely be top four. Um, anything higher than that will be a miracle. But fourth place is where United should aim. And if we even get fifth, I won't be surprised because of our, of our lack of squad depth and the propensity for some of our players to be injured. If Wang Basaka gets injured, goodness knows what's going to happen. If Pogba gets injured, goodness knows what's going to happen. So, yeah, guys, um, the way I see it, um, you know, we we move on, we keep going, um, but, yeah, um, the, the players need to keep put their heads up. Crystal Palace in a bit of bad form right now, so hopefully... They don't spring up on us, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we can we can come back within. Thanks for listening, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studios. Thanks again for everyone who tuned tuned in uh, to the game. 
I'll be doing a, um, a player player rating player rating video in a second as well. Um, but yeah, um, it's <laughs> it's 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 tough. It's tough. But but there we go. Um, have a nice evening, guys, and cheers.